Hello and welcome to Computer Tech and More. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Fantex T30. This is part of my redone series where I redid my whole noise testing analysis and updating it for future te testing methodology. So let's get right into a little bit of explanation and then go over the data. So first, a little bit of explanation. So my previous testing analysis isn't completely invalid, it's just not testing what I particularly wanted to test. So the previous testing methodology is closer to simulating a mesh filter directly over the fan or the fan in a pull configuration over a heatsink. On to what kind of data we're going to be taking a look at. So if you're new to this channel, I do encourage you to watch the second part of this video where I have all the detailed graphs and data collection information and explanations to what we're actually looking at. While the first part of this video is just a was now scenario, where it's just all the fans that I've tested so far, their rank, the model, the RPM, and the airspeed that was going through it for each of the main tests. So it's basically just an overview, but none of the specifics. Um, so with all that said, let's get into it. First up is the CPU cooler noise normalized. Uh, the T30 was ranked 27th originally and is now ranked 4th noise normalized. At 100% PEW fan signaling, the T30 was ranked second and retains that position. In the value proposition to the CPU air cooler, noise normalized, it was ranked 42nd. It has now moved up to 27th. A value proposition to the CPU air cooler at 100% PEW fan signaling, it was ranked 20th and retains that position. CFM testing, noise normalized, the T30 was ranked 20th, it is now ranked first. Uh, CFM testing, 100% PW fan signaling, the T30 was ranked first and retains that position. Value proposition for the CFM test, noise normalized, it was ranked 40th, it is now ranked 20th, so a nice improvement in position right there. Uh, value proposition, 100% PW fan signaling, CFM testing, the T30 was ranked 13th and retains that position. Uh, case simulation test, 6 inch mark, noise normalized, the T30 was ranked 36th, it is now ranked 27th. The 11 inch mark, noise normalized, case simulation test, it was ranked 43rd. It is now ranked 31st, so a nice improvement in position right there. The 6 inch mark, noise normalized, case sim simulation test, value proposition, the T30 was ranked 46th, is now ranked 43rd. The 11 inch mark, value proposition, noise normalized, the T30 was ranked 44th, it is now ranked 38th. So a little bit of improvement there for that fan. Now let's go into the specific tests that. Uh, I tested for the first test is the case simulation test. This test can be looked at in a couple key, or two key main ways. And the first and most important for you, the viewer, is what size case do you actually plan on, plan on purchasing? Do you plan on buying a small form factor that is still a front to back airflow using a CPU air cooler, so not uh, radiators? Or do you plan on using these fans at the bottom or the top of your case for a short throw distance to blow air directly into your uh, GPU, depending on the whether it's inverted layout? That 6-inch mark is representative of that short throw distance. The 9-inch mark is representative of a compact tower. Again, a front-to-back airflow design with an air cooler. Uh, the case is just a little bit longer than an eight standard ATX motherboard, so you'd be looking at short GPUs for that size case. The 11 inch mark would be representative of your standard mid towers. And then we have the 14.5 inch mark. That is for large towers. Something like the Factor Design Torrent would be very representative of that. Now, I did mention that this is testing is most specific for air coolers. And the reason for that is you want the maximum air speed hitting your cooler at once. So right here we have noise normalized distance uh, from the fan versus air speed. And the main key point on here is my control fan, this teal line. My control pan, fan is three parts A12 by 25 to one part A14. In general, 140 millimeter class fans do better at the 11 and 14.5 inch mark, while smaller 120 millimeter class fans tend to do better at the six and nine inch mark. So on this graph, I did include other fans that fit into this category that could spin at 3000 RPM. So we got the 10 T30, the P12 Max, and the NF F12 IPC 3000, and we have the RPM they were spinning at for the noise normalized testing. So we start to see that the T30 at the 6 inch mark actually performs better than the other ones, and then it drops off more significantly, indicating that its design actually isn't as efficient, particularly at lower RPMs, of getting a good front to back airflow. But this fan is. Uh, let's see how things look at 100% PW fan signaling. So on this, I did include uh, extra fans, so the uh, Ice Scale Extra Iceberg Thermal. 
it was just a ridiculously powerful fan, but its uh, noise normalized value was basically unreliable because it can't spin slow enough. But I included it for the 100% PWM fan signaling because it was a very applicable here. I also included the Mobius 120OC because it's another really high spinning fan. So the control fan is right here. And in this test, it is, allows the fans to go full up to their 100% PWM, PWM fan signaling while the control fan is based around like 2000 RPM. A lot of these other fans are spinning at 3000 RPM. So it kind of sees you how much extra oomph 3000 RPM gives you. You got a blue line, that is the T30. So it's a little bit worse than the other ones. And then we have the F12, which is a little bit worse than the other ones, but the F12 and the T30 tie at the 14.5 inch mark, which they tie almost tie with my control fan. So again, it indicates how poor performance they are, especially as we get farther away from the fans. They're not efficient at blowing air across a long distance. So then how do they compare against a swath of other fans? The T30 is right here. It starts off tied with the Wonder Snail and then drops off steadily, becoming just barely over what I consider a bad fan, which is the NFS12B. Unfortunately, Anocto is right at the bottom of my graphs. It's just the way the cookie crumbles, apparently. At 100% PW fan signaling, the T30 is now at this blue line. And you can see that it's sitting in the middle of the graphs. But here, again, everything is running at 100% PW fan signaling, so you need to take that into account. What is the noise level for each of the fans? The T30 is at 35.4 decibels by my readings. And it is just a lot noisier than a lot of the other fans around it. So... You really need to choose how you're using this fan, in my opinion. It isn't a case airflow fan. I wouldn't use it as that at all, period. How does it do in uh, airspeed versus noise? So I chose it at the 9-inch mark, and the reason for that is a lot of fans, and the T30 is one of them, tends to drop off very steeply at the 9-inch mark. So right away, we do see that the T30 is shifted well towards the bottom of the graph, and it does start to gain some efficiency as we reach higher RPMs, but it's already so noisy at that point that you really don't, you really don't want to be running this fan at that RPM. Fifty percent. Now we're on to airspeed through my CPU air cooler, the Noctua U12A. On both these graphs, better fans are going to be sitting top left, worse fans are going to be sitting bottom right. And once again, we do have my control fan in this. It is represented by the blue line. And we have a couple other representative fans at 3000 RPM on these graphs just to represent, well, how other fans are performing. And on the left side, and that is RPM versus airspeed, it is basically a blade efficiency graph. It is how efficient is this blade design at pushing air through a cooler. So we can see that the T30 is actually a very efficient design. It is well outperforming the control fan. On the right side, we have noise versus airspeed. This is how efficient the fan is at uh, blowing air for a given noise. The T30 actually starts off a little bit better than my control fan and matches it for a little while and then actually outperforms it throughout most of it and then it just becomes very noisy but it is pushing a lot of air now onto how it compares against a bunch of other fans that i've tested this t30 here is ranked towards the top of the graphs so it is definitely an excellent performer here in pressure scenarios um so it's definitely a top pick now if you have a fan that is ranked lower on this and uh, this this graph data over here, this wattage to airspeed, is only applicable to my CPU or cooler, the Noctua U12A, and to my particular CPU, the i7-11700K. So if you don't have both, this data isn't directly applicable. At 100% PW fan signaling, well, the T30 isn't the best that I've tested, but second place isn't half bad. But at what price? It is a very noisy fan, significantly noisier than a lot of other fans around it. So... Uh, it's up to you to decide if the extra performance is worth that noise level. Now we're on to a cooler airspeed versus decibel rating. So as we climb in airspeed, how much noise, extra noise does it generate? So the T30 starts off pretty much smack dab in the middle of the pack, 
but as we get higher and higher in air speed, well, it tends to flatten out quite a bit as RPMs climb, and then it hits a really a high efficiency curve right here where it gains a whole lot more airspeed for not much extra noise. Now we're on to CFM testing. So CFM is just cubic feet per minute. Um, and sort of case in point, what we're seeing right here, so the blue line is my control flying, the red line is um, the uh, NFF12, and the green line is the T30. The T30 is still outperforming my control fan, despite it being very clearly not good at uh, having a good concentrated airflow. So it's proving my point. This test is fundamentally more similar to the uh, airspeed through my CPU air cooler. Uh, in terms of noise versus CFM, we're seeing a very similar trend to what we saw in the cooler test, where the T30 is outperforming my control fan ever so slightly, and with the F12 being underperforming it by quite a bit, actually. Now, how does it actually perform compared to the other fans? Well, noise normalized, the T30 is the best. And at 100% PW fan signaling, the T30 is once again in first place. It is just really good in this test. Well, you have it. And here's the T30. Let's just move on. Now we're on to the value proposition. The T30 is a $31 fan, however, it can be purchased in a triple pack that will save you some money in terms of total cost of the fan, but I did it as if you were buying a single fan, but do note that if you bought the triple pack, the cost per fan is a little bit less and its value is actually uh, goes up quite a bit. Uh, but value proposition is really simple. It's uh, air speed or volumetric flow rate divided by money, so how much it costs, and that is the value. Uh, if you're on an ultra tight budget, value proposition should be your number one uh, criteria that you're taking a look at because you're tr if you're trying to squeeze every penny out of your build, you want the best bang for the buck, so you care about this the most. All of that said, the T30 is towards the bottom of the graphs here in the case in case airflow, noise normalized, and 100%. So let's just move on. At the 11 inch mark, well, it's even worse. It isn't the worst, but it is towards the bottom of the graphs. And if you're running your case fans at 100% PWM fan signaling, something has probably gone seriously wrong inside your case and it's overheating and it's time to shut it off and figure out what went wrong. I'm, I'm just saying. Now, um, cooler performance, noise normalized and 100% PWM fan signaling. The T30 does okay. It's not stellar as buying it a single fan, which is why I would recommend actually getting the triple pack. So uh, if, you, if you need three fans, this is great to get. If you only need two, it's a little bit harder to justify because then what do you do with that one extra fan? Meaning it, you're you're wasting, you're wasting that dollar amount. Uh, but if you think you might need it in the future, then it's fine for it to hang around. Fans don't really go bad in storage. Going for budget, you want to be looking at the TLG12 or the P12 Max. In CFM testing, well, it does well towards the upper part of the graphs, but it's still a far cry away from the actual top value picks. And at 100% PW fencing, it does significantly better. So where does that leave me with the T30? Well, like I just said, the T30 is definitely a great pick for a CPU cooler or a radiator, which is a CPU cooler. Um, its value would come in the triple pack. So if you need three fans, six fans, whatever it is like that, Definitely is a good pick at that point because you're saving money on the triple pack as opposed to buying the single one, which is more expensive. Um, but if you only need one, I would have to say I don't recommend this fan. All right, well, we finished the video, and at the end of every video, I like to show off my raw data. This data does belong to me. However, if you would like to use it for your own particular purposes, that means you use it to put into Excel yourself and... Um, well, you save it on there and you can make your own graphs and charts, whatever you want, for your own particular use. If you want to put it in any sort of video, publication, or journal, I do ask that you reference me and my channel because I am the one who generated this data. If you uh, want to react to my video, I just ask that you ask me first. Uh, it very well likely will be okay with me. Um, if you've got suggestions for fans for me to review in the future, please leave them in the comment section down below. And if you've got constructive constructive criticism for me on uh, how I can improve my videos. I will definitely take that. And it just may take me a little while for it to roll out to future videos because I tend to review a whole lot of fans 
uh, usually around 10 to 15 at a time. And then I film and record, and then over the period of time, I uh, edit the videos and stuff. So this whole allotment has been 50 plus fans, and recording them all at once to then upload over a period of time. So I will get to it. Um, please uh, subscribe for more content if you enjoyed what you saw. And I greatly appreciate it if you join me on Patreon because everything that I make there will go directly into helping me get better test equipment right now. Um, other than that, have a great day. I hope to see you next time here on Computer Tech and More.